to a traditional academic career, his choice of home, an isolated cottage just yards from the surf of Dorset's Chesil Beach. This is very historic grass. This is this outdoor coast park. This winter's string of hurricane force gales shook his kitchen windows. A direct warning from the living planet he first dubbed Gaia. Well, science is about probabilities. There's no certainties at all in it. And you just have to look at the evidence and see how strong it is. Uh, I'm gradually becoming of the view that the evidence coming in from the world, from co world climate change, is pretty convincing that something nasty is going on. His 1979 book, Gaia, A New Look at Life on Earth, made Lovelock the darling of the nascent environmental movement. But don't dare call him green. I've not changed my mind. We should have kept to nuclear. And they threw that away and went to wind farm. I think they're mad, mad, completely mad. His popular work argues the planet is a living system in equilibrium. But Earth, says Lovelock, will look after itself. It's us humans who need to watch out. We've got the wrong ideas. I mean, it's not as if we had to adapt to a nightmare world. We've just merely got to adapt to a hotter and a different world. Uh, uh, and uh, it's not necessarily a worse world. David Cameron famously hugged a husky. What do you make of this Greenpeace yeah. government ever? No better and no worse than any other. I don't think politics really should come into it. But when you come to things like climate, they don't know a damn thing about it. And there are endless people shouting in there, just, just buy ourselves, save the planet, or just do that wrong. Who are they to believe? And then the civil servants come along and give them, instead of good advice, bad advice. Because they've all been infiltrated by green ideas and ideology. There's a lot of political enthusiasm for fracking and a very heated environmental objection to it. What are your views on fracking? I think it's a damn good idea. It'll help us get through. It'll help Britain to muddle through. Lovelock's scientific reputation isn't just based on his thinking, but his making. This invention, the electron capture detector, was the first to identify the threat of ozone-thinning CFCs. He may shun environmentalism, but he's passionate about the environment. What did you think then when the railway line at Dawlish disappeared into the sea a few weeks ago? Chesil Beach started moving right. up off down the coast. Well, I thought it was a shame that we hadn't made more effort, and we had the money to do it, to better protect those things, to make them more secure, instead of spending money utterly pointlessly on windmills and solar cells, which at our latitude and our position are just silly things to do. It's enough to make green blood boil, but there is a growing sympathy for using emissions-free nuclear energy to power our way towards more sustainable living, rejecting traditional environmentalism. So what do you think of mainstream environmentalism? It appalls me, Mike, that's my view. I think using guilt is a good old hangover, bad side of Christianity. Uh, um, it's not a good way of solving problems. At 94, James Lovelock has lived to see his ideas come from the margins to the mainstream. And while it might be easy for a man of his age to say not to worry about our warming planet, the recent weather suggests he's probably right that adapting to the future may have to come first. Tom Clark, Channel 4 News, in Dorset.